After seeing colorful and a mysterious voice tells him he's won a prize, a boy suddenly wakes up in what appears to be a morgue. Not remembering anything, he tries to leave the room and scares all the workers. Minutes later, he's sent back and a woman named Rudy shows up by his side, worried about his condition. The boy passes out and when he wakes up again, he finds himself in a hospital room. He tries to escape, and as he runs down the hallway, doctors and nurses talk to him using creepy stares and cryptic sentences. The elevator isn't working, so the boy climbs out of the window, but the rain makes him slip and fall. A mysterious force stops him and makes him stand on the side of the building as if it was normal. A window cleaner with the same creepy stare shows up walking on the wall too and when the boy asks if this is real, the man hits him to make him feel the real pain. This man is the guardian, and he explains that the boy's a soul whose memories have been erased before he was given the body of a teen named Min to live again. The guardian makes Min hold onto the edge of the window and makes reality take the right angle again, so Min must climb inside. When he gets back in bed, a nurse shows up and is too forceful with the needle, causing Min to accidentally knock off a water bottle. As the water freezes in the air, the nurse reveals herself as the guardian, who can take any shape they want. The guardian calls Min's body a homestay and explains that it's not permanent as they hand the boy an hourglass that is counting the time the soul has to discover why Min ended things for himself. If in 100 days he doesn't have the answer, he'll die again and never be reborn. Before leaving, the guardian reminds him not to let anyone know he isn't Min, and the water finally falls to the floor. The next morning, a doctor comes for a checkup, and Min manages to pass it by saying his full name because he read it from the sticker on the medicine, thus he's allowed to go home. Rudy turns out to be Min's mother, and at home Min discovers he also has an older brother named Men that isn't happy to see Min return. For now, Rudy wants Min to sleep with Men so he can be watched over, he'll also wear Men's clothes until they get him new ones. Men overhears this and tells his mother he'll be staying at a friend's tonight. Min asks his mom what happened the day he ended things, but Rudy doesn't want to talk about it. Next, Min finds his dad, who instead of welcoming him, asks him to wait because he's on an important call for his MLM group, for which he quit his regular job. When night falls, Min looks around the house while everyone sleeps. There aren't pictures of him in albums or frames, and when he goes to check out his old room, he finds it locked. Min tries to peek inside by looking under the door, but Men finds him and sends him back. The next morning, Min sees Men leaving with two computers. Then he grabs a bunch of keys from the living room and tries to unlock his room, to no avail. Min returns to Men's room and climbs out the window to walk along the edge of the building, this allows him to reach his own window and finally get inside. There aren't any personal belongings around, only a few pieces of empty furniture and the framed picture they used at his funeral. Seeing the death date shakes him to his core and causes him to drop the picture to the floor, the noise gets Rudy's attention and she finds Min red-handed. When he asks what happened to his things, Rudy explains he got rid of them. She wishes to know why Min did what he did, it's then that Min notices the spot on the floor where the blood used to be. Crying her heart out, Rudy hugs Min tightly, asking him not to do that ever again. The following day, Min goes back to school, and at least his mother got him his wallet back. In it he finds a curious brooch and his mother's business card, she's an engineer that often has to leave town for work. She didn't tell anyone in school about what happened, meaning Min's story will be that he had the flu. Going back to class isn't hard because Min was a bit of a hermit and didn't have many friends. The only person that approaches him is his best friend Lee, who has a crush on him that the original Min didn't return. Pai is in the card stunt club and so is Min, so he gets dragged to the next meeting where the leaders remind him he needs to finish the drawing for the next competition. Min immediately gets to work but gets distracted when he sees students wearing the same brooch he found in his wallet. By following them he discovers the brooches mark the elite students of the Olympics class, so Min puts his on and tries to join them, but the teacher knows he isn't his student and kicks him out. Later, Min finds a note from his tutoring partner telling him to meet her at the library. This is how he meets Pai, a beautiful girl that he quickly develops a crush on just like the old Min did. After class, Min decides to use the card his mother left him to buy nicer clothes and get a trendy haircut to impress Pai. Days pass with Min having a great time with Pai. One afternoon, his dad comes by the school to remind him he has a meeting with the school therapist and gives Min a bunch of his products to promote. The weird therapist begins asking very awkward questions about Min's puberty before he stands up and swallows a lot of the products Min brought. Suddenly this medicine freezes in the middle of the air and Min finally understands this guy is actually the guardian, who is here to remind Min to search for clues. He'll only have one chance to answer, and if the answer is right the hourglass will stop. A few days later, there's a festival at school and Min looks for Pai, only to find her crying over a practice test she couldn't do. The pressure of the elite class is too much, so Min offers words of support to remind her she's great. He also wonders if they're a couple, which Pai denies because he never asked her out. Min invites her to the festival and they have lots of fun together playing games, making wishes, and watching the fireworks. Pai mentions Min has changed a lot and doesn't look sad anymore, then they hold hands. The next day, Min overhears his mother on the phone, apparently, his dad sold her wedding ring to pay for more products for his MLM. To cheer her up, 
Min helps her cook some durians, which he eats with no issues. This shocks Rudy because Min used to hate durians, but she's happy to see she's got a whole new son. She also shares some anecdotes of his childhood that show how much she always took care of him even in the hard times. Some days later, Min must complete a dare he had promised Pai for passing his exams. She puts a bunch of soap on his hair and makes him run 10 laps at the bridge, only to end up going with him for company. When they're done, Pai gives him a gift because it's his birthday, it's a kaleidoscope that she made herself. Pai then confesses she likes this Min better, and the two of them kiss. Later at school, Min starts a drawing of Pai at the bridge. While working in the club, he finds some pictures that show him in the background next to a locker. Min rushes to force it open and sadly finds it empty, but Lee sees this and reminds him he left his laptop in her own locker with a note to give it to his mom. When Lee went to his house that day, Rudy wasn't there so she left the laptop with Men. At home, Min searches Men's bedroom. He doesn't find the laptop, but he finds the missing pictures with his face scratched off on all of them. He also finds a bunch of paperwork indicating that Men wants to go study in Germany. Next, Min checks Men's computer and finds a conversation of him complaining about what Min did because now he has to stay with the family to support them instead of going to Germany. Men confesses that he hates Min and wishes he were dead, he also found his goodbye letter in the laptop and hid it from his parents. Min then realizes that the second computer Men took with him when he left must have been his, so he goes to Men's college to find it. Men catches him red-handed and says their family would be happier without him before throwing the computer out of the window. Min immediately rushes outside and finds the laptop floating because the guardian is there, laughing at him before making the computer crash onto the ground. Min takes the laptop home and manages to turn it on. The only file left is the goodbye letter, which explains it was Min scratched his face off the pictures before mixing some shady medicine with soda to make a deadly combo. The letter also says he hated his dad for taking advantage of his wife's salary to stay in that MLM cult and that he hated how his brother was always condescending toward him, making him feel small. He did love his mother, but it was frustrating that she was almost never home, therefore the only light in his life was Pi. One evening, Min goes to visit Pi and he's shocked to see her teacher getting frisky with her without Pi complaining much. The next day, Min interrupts the elite class to punch the teacher and take Pi away with him. When Min confronts her on the roof, he yells at her with fury, making Pi cry. She doesn't like the teacher, she only puts up with him because it had been her only chance to join the Olympics team for a better future, her career is what matters the most to her. Min thinks she doesn't need him, so he points at the ground and tells her she should end things for herself. Later, Min's dad has to come over to talk with the principal about what happened and wonders why Min can't be normal, prompting Min to call him out for what he did to Rudy's ring. Sometime later, Min decides to surprise his mother at work following the address on the back of the business card, only to accidentally discover Rudy has been staying with a secret boyfriend. When Rudy notices Min is there, she tries to explain things, but Min runs away in tears. Back in his hometown, Min stays by the bridge under the rain, wondering if he should end things again. The raindrops suddenly stop moving and the guardian shows up, wondering if Min has the answer. Min replies he hates this life and doesn't blame the real Min for what he did, he blames the family and Pi because they can't be trusted. The hourglass doesn't stop meaning the answer is wrong, so the guardian reminds Min he has three days left. When he returns home, Min smashes all the things in his room. Moments later, Lee shows up to ask for the finished drawing. Min's too annoyed to care and starts talking rudely to Lee, telling her that Min never considered her a friend and will never like her back, he also confesses Min missed school because he tried to end things and didn't even mention Lee in his goodbye letter. Lee leaves the place in tears. In the evening, Min and his dad go pick up Rudy when she returns from work. She's tired and wants to go home, but Min insists they should go out to have dinner together. He also mentions he visited her at work to make her feel guilty. At the restaurant, Min leaves his parents alone by pretending to go to the bathroom, but he spies on them and notices his dad returning the ring. Instead of being happy, Rudy finally confesses her affair. The dad leaves without them and now Min and his mom are alone in the car. Crying, Rudy apologizes to Min and explains she broke up with her other boyfriend so she can always stay with her family. Min refuses to accept the apology and tells her he isn't her son, her real son died because she was a bad mother. An argument starts between them and this distracts Rudy from seeing the other vehicle coming, thus a car crash happens. Hours later, Min wakes up in the hospital. He immediately goes to check on his mother, who is still unconscious, and Men shows up to explain she's in critical condition. The dad told him what happened, and Men wonders why Min didn't tell him instead of ending things since he would have helped him deal with it, he thinks Min needs to stop thinking nobody loved him. Min's not hurt and is sent home, where he finds the durian dessert Rudy left for him and the kaleidoscope Pi gifted him. Min realizes he's been acting very selfishly and makes it up to his club by finally finishing the drawing. The next day, the Olympics team announces they'll be joining a very important tournament. Pai is supposed to give a speech, but seeing Min in the crowd makes her feel guilty and she runs away. Minute finds her in a classroom about to do something stupid with a glass cup, so he apologizes to her and hugs her, explaining he had been angry the other day and talked without thinking. Pai shouldn't be disgusted with herself because it all was the teacher's fault. 
Feeling a bit better, Pi finally goes to the principal to tell her about the teacher's abuse. Since it's too late to practice a new design, Min leaves the drawing for Pi with a message of support. Afterward, Min goes to see the card stunt club rehearsing. He apologizes to Lee, explaining she had been the only one to be nice to him and he never appreciated. Lee accepts the apology and confesses that since Min didn't bring a new drawing, she gave the team one of his old ones. To Min's shock, the team suddenly forms a drawing of Pi at the bridge that looks exactly like the new one. Memories start flooding Min's mind as he runs away. The previous Min's life flashes in front of him, showing him all the good times he had with his dear family and Pi. Min falls down the stairs and the hourglass, now frozen, falls from his pocket as Min suddenly reappears in his room with the guardian taking the shape of his reflection. Min has finally understood that he isn't a random soul, he's the original Min, and he died because he didn't know how to appreciate the good things in his life, it's all his own fault. The Guardian congratulates him for winning and explains the test had only been a way to make him see the truth, Min won't be reborn anywhere else, he can keep this life. After the Guardian disappears, Min wakes up in the school again and the hourglass is gone. Lee checks on him and Min hugs her to celebrate before rushing to the hospital to find Rudy has woken up. She explains she and the dad are getting divorced, so Min can help him to live with and she won't blame him for choosing the dad because she hasn't been a good mother. Crying, Min apologizes for his actions and swears he'll never regret being her son. From then on, Min returns to his daily life. When Pi sends him a message showing she's won a medal, he fulfills his part of the deal and runs a few laps down the bridge with soap on his head and only wearing his underwear. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.